Hey everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? Hope you're enjoying this wonderful evening, this wonderful Saturday night. I am a Mayan, so what I think I'm gonna do is do a little sketching and doodling tonight. We should get at least about one or two pictures in before the night's out. And since right now I'm sitting in kind of a jazzy mood and this is some music, I actually have some music playing in the background. So I figure I will draw a musician, more specifically a busker. In case you don't know what a busker is, and a guy is like a busker, like a street musician. And basically, what they do is that basically they'll go on the street and actually play, actually play music, you know, for money. And a lot of times, you, can make, you have something to make as little as maybe fifty, fifty dollars a day to two hundred dollars a day. And it can be really depending on what city you're in. Some places, like such as New York and like not New Orleans, they really make a huge killing there. So I think I'll draw a few of those musicians. So. Well, I think I'll start off with drawing this guy's head, you know, with a circle for a shape of his head. That's why I started with scratching, you know, for his chin. I figure, you know, way this guy's looking so far from starting, probably more of a heavy set guy. Draw a nose circle for his torso. Draw a larger one on the lower portion of his torso. And I figure what I'll. I have to draw his arms. I figure what I'll do for him is that I'm going to have him be a saxophone player. And one thing I'll be an unusual about him is that um he's not going to be a, a saxophone. He'll be a baritone sax. Now, baritone saxes are really heavy instruments to play. So I figured that would be something that could really you know, attract a lot of attention. So, of course, I'll draw the position of his arms. Yeah, if you and if you're playing a thing like the, like a baritone saxophone, you really need to have you know, it's a good breath but also you have to strength to really get care because if you've seen those things, they're pretty huge. So right now, I'm just gonna actually just kind of draw lightly sketching, you know, his posture, his gesture. I think I'll have him kind of hunched over, you know, because you know, since he's kind of carrying like a heavy instrument, it's gonna be hard to kind of like stand up straight. You know, I think I'll start drawing his features. Draw his nose. I'll probably give him a round nose. You know, his lips. To make sure, you know, they're puckered out. They look to pucker out so they're right on the reed of the saxophone. I figure what I'll do, I'll probably give him glasses. You know, since he's a cool dude, he probably plays some cool jazz. So I'm gonna give him some cool looking sunglasses, some cool ass sunglasses. You know, some small eyebrows. The way things are going, I'll probably give him like a large, kind of looks like pretty prominent chin. You know, give him his ears. And the way I'm looking at it with him is that he's probably, even though he's a street musician, he's probably like really nicely dressed. So you gotta make him look stylish. So I figure what I'll do is you know, I'll give him a hat. Yeah, nice little hat to kind of, you know, also keep him stylish, but also you know, kind of protecting from the sun because depending on what time of, time of season it is, it's probably gonna be hot out there. You know, it was a place like maybe like New York right about now, it's probably not gonna be, be all that warm, all that warm. But a place like down down here in Georgia or Florida, where some of my relatives is at, it's gonna be much warmer. So you're gonna want to have that, have that extra protection from the shade. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna draw he's doing his hair. Maybe I'll give him maybe I'll give him some long, some longer mane of hair. I think now what I'm gonna do is start doing it on the collar of his shirt. Just get it on the collar of his shirt. I 
Yeah. I figure, you know, he's probably just wearing something pretty modest, just a pretty simple, sh just a pretty simple shirt. But he is still going to wear a tie. So let's say, you know, he's a busker, but he's like a semi-casual, you know, you know, busker. Gonna make sure I draw his arms. Since he's gonna become a bigger guy, he's gonna you know, have like bigger arms. Start drawing a little gesture for his hands. As I'm kind of going, I'm just kind of starting to fill out his figure and making sure he's not, making sure his form is nice and clear. Also, I didn't even realize I've barely drawn his saxophone, so let me start drawing in this little saxophone. Usualized saxophones, they curve at the top, they, they kind of curve and kind of like tight up near the top, then they go straight down. Then another deep hook around the corner, and usually, you know. The lower end, it juts out, juts out in one big hole where the sound notes and sounds will come out. Then, of course, on the side, there's all the little keys that you have to play. And Grant Kima, I'm going entirely from memory. You don't have to do that on reference on me on hand, but I can re retune you as it goes on. Now I got his top half looking pretty good. Let me start work on the bottom half, and then we get his legs. And since he's kind of be hunched over, you know, his legs are gonna be a bit bent. You know, he's probably really into the moment. You draw his legs, you know, draw his slacks. So I mean, you know, since he's kind of a stylish dude, you know, I'll give him kind of these pointy shoes. His pointy shoes. Almost like Sunday shoes. But yeah, it's big, you know, since tomorrow is Sunday. <laughs> Just real long, almost pointy shoes. He is still a stylish guy. Oh, and also, you know, since he is a busker, one's going to need, you know, is a tip jar. So let me draw one for him right here. Just one the bottom shelf, maybe just a glass jar. And you know, let's give him like a couple of dollars in here because chances are people are really liking what he's hearing. And they want to give him, you know, make his time work with while. Let's have him for him right here. All right, so we have our main rough sketch as of right now. So you know, let's start refining him just a little bit more. And I think what I'll do, I'll probably go and start from the top and I'll start fine tuning some of his features. Yeah, I think I'll probably give him some facial hair. And you know, right now, what I'm using right now is like a red um, like ballpoint pen. I tend to do a lot of my sketches, you know, with ballpoint pens. I feel they're really easy to use. You get a lot of like soft and hard marks with them. I feel they really come handy, you know, in that department. So let me start fine tuning. Let me just kind of fine tune his nose. You know, I think his eye, eye brush can move over a bit, so I can move that over a little bit later. You know, fine tune his gold glasses. You make his puckered lips a little more pronounced. Let me draw out the reed. That's one thing you need for a saxophone. You need to have like, a reed on you so you can actually play your instrument properly. Let me make sure I get the um, hand, hands around the saxophone. You know, probably you know, having you know, play a saxophone, you better have some really delicate but really fast fingers to play all those notes. I'm 
draw the collar around the edge of the on the edge of his hand, especially when it comes to his little wrist. I think as I'm doing this, I'll probably start putting the wrinkles on some of his shirt. There we go. I'll do the same for down here to really start fine-tuning his pose. And also just adding more detail to our saxophone. I think I'll give him a little design on the, on the side of the saxophone. Maybe my maybe it's probably a custom made for him. So he's decorated. So maybe he's got a little comes like a little leaf like design because he's a pretty peaceful dude. So he wants his instrument to be looking just as peaceful as him. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. I think we're getting somewhere with this. I think what we'll go ahead and do now, instead of using this red red ballpoint pen, I'm going to use a different pen. I'm going to use a black one this time around. And so, let's start fine-tuning these details a little more. So right now, I'm just going to go start from the top. we will start from where his glasses are. And you can see, you know, his glass are basically just very simple circles. Yeah, I figure what I'll do, you know, maybe he's got like really dark, these dark high coke filled glasses, but they're shiny glasses too. You know, all that you can barely see his eyes, but they're cool looking glasses because, you know, he's a cool looking dude. So let me go ahead and fill those in. Let me bring his nose out to the forefront. Let me get his eyebrows. And you know, he's and this guy I figure I'm gonna give him like pretty short, short but thick looking eyebrows. Yeah, one is just enough so you can see his eyes. Also, I'm gonna start working on his little lips. Yeah, make sure you know his lips are more pronounced. And, you know, I figure you know, for him. I'm gonna give him kind of a small mustache. Kind of a small, you know, but pronounced mustache. I have one going on one side, you know, one going on the other. Let me make sure I get the bottom part of his lips. Also, what I'm gonna do next, let me make, this, make sure I get the read. Draw the end portion of that read. Before I draw like the, the edge of the saxophone. Also, now that I got that going, I'm gonna start drawing the rest of his head. So I'm gonna start drawing the side of his head with his cheeks. Make sense. Make sure I get his huge chin at the bottom. And let me bring out you know, the fact that he's got a pretty square looking chin. I'm gonna draw his ears. Can't forget the um, edges of his glasses. You know, he gets hairline, you know, for his hair. He has long, flowing ha mane of hair. Thank you. Now, has some hairs maybe hanging out from this from his hat here. Also, let me sure I draw the brim of his hat. There we go. There we go. Now let's kind of draw like the brim of his hat. And you can see, you know, he's got a pretty wide looking hat. Yeah, there we go. And also draw it at the top of his hat as well. Top of his hat, you know, some could say, you know, maybe it's say the sun hat, some it's a pork hat. It looks more, I guess more a pork hat, but I think pork hats, I think their um, rims are a little bit shorter than this, but Either way, it's something, you know, that's going to look good on him. Make sure I get the collar, collar of his shirt. Get the other collar of his shirt. 
Also, now let's make sure you get his little tie right here at the bottom. So I'm gonna have it come out from underneath his little collar of his shirt. Let me get that going. It's gonna become a nice kind of little triangular shape. Have that come down at the bottom here. So now we got that. Now we can start working on his little shoulders. And see, you can see he's got pretty wide shoulders. So I'm actually have to have those brung out from here. And then from there, just start bringing out and connect to his arms. Bring out his little shoulders on the other end as well. And bring out the musculature in his arms. And I think a lot of little wrinkles like near near where his muscles are supposed to be, so let you know, you know, that you know that it is cloth, you know, it actually is covering you know his body. Do the same right here. I have to make sure I have these little creases and little folds, especially like right here, especially on these little joints right there. Because sometimes little details like that can really make you know make clothing a lot more convincing than you think. Oh, I make sure to do like a little end collar at the end of his shirt. And also, I'm going to start drawing his hands. You know, yeah, that's one thing with hands. Hands are always really, really, really tricky to draw for draw for some reason, but it's something I'm still kind of learning how to do. Yeah, but you know, if, if I'll do in practice, you, know, you can always get better at doing it. One thing I always feel that it helps is really just kind of drawing the overall gesture of the um, hands first, just the overall shape of what you want it to look like before working on the little finer details. And then, of course, just doing just random sketch, not random sketches, but also just doing just rough sketches of your hands like in different poses because that's the thing about the hand it could look different in different poses because like it could look it look pretty okay in one end angle it could look crazy in another it seems like hands are always look so different like when you're at different angles and different positions but that presents a challenge and you know that's how you look at art art can be a really fun challenge all right so let's make sure he's got his fingers Fingers are curled up, you know, since he's kind of like really pressing on all the buttons. All the little markers of the sacks. And then on top of here, he's got some that are kind of curling around the corner, around the little saxophone. All right, and also we're gonna start drawing our little sacks as well. In case you haven't noticed, this is like a baritone sax, so it's a pretty huge saxophone. Make sure I draw the little keys he has to play. And as they go down, they get bigger and bigger as they go towards the bottom. They all got these little keys that go around it. Yeah, it's a really big instrument, big heavy instrument. Yeah, when it comes on um, like jazz musicians, especially um saxophone players, you really don't see a lot that'll do you know like the baritone sax, maybe because they're so big, but they're cumbersome. But they produce just really, just a really unique and lovely sound. Like a few off the top of my head that were known for really doing that is like one is um Gary Mulligan. He was more of an older um, saxophone player. He played a lot in the um, like 1960s. I know um, he did a lot of stuff with um, Chet Baker, who was a trumpet player. But that was always main instrument of choice, you know, was the um, baritone sax. And another one off the top of my head that I can think was probably um, a German, I think it was a German guy, um, Peter Brodsman. And granted, now he was more of an avant-garde um, um, like baritone sax player. But he, but he could always get some really like unique looking sounds, you know, out of a saxophone. And so I think what I'll do here, you know, since I got the saxophone shape set, you know, we start coloring in the wider end. Because when they have sax, saxophone, it's really kind of cavernous inside. And I think I'll lightly color in the leaves a little bit here because I might use a different color or something else, you know, for a design, for what we'll design it later on. 
So I think I'll just leave that as is for right now. Yeah, I think I'll also you know, should I get the um some buttons for his shirt. Make sure I get his back. I think I'll start to kind of lightly draw in his belt buckle here. Now start drawing his legs. So I'll draw a little folds to his folds to his pants. I think I will color for his pant leg as well. Also, I'll draw his shoes. I think he's got shiny little shoes, maybe some loafers. Never know. The shoes they could be Stacy Adams. Cause I got shoes like that, you know, Stacy Adams. They're all, they always got a good brand of shoes. They're always stylish. I feel anybody can look good with those on. So let me get those looking nice and nice and good. Oh, so okay. Now that we got our got our sax play looking pretty good. Oh, let's put our little tip jar. Like I said in the beginning, you know, buskers, it's a surprisingly lucrative gig because like I like I talked to somewhere they can make up like a two hundred dollar a day just like playing on the street, you know, playing music. And it's not just sax players, they're just been drummer buskers. I've seen some of the guitarists, even a few piano players, surprisingly. You just on keyboard. But then it's a pretty lucrative gig. You just gotta go to the right place to find it. Like you'll you'll probably see them a lot more in the big cities or cities that are known for having um like a lot of musicians, like New York's a big one. Kansas City, mainly because that was a huge place, you know, where jazz was so popular. New Orleans is another big one. Uh, let me see another one. And to an extent, even some smaller cities too, you know, at, here in Atlanta, you know, we tend to have a few here every now and then. Chicago, that's another good one. That's such a huge music hub. All right, let me just do it and start coloring in his hair. I figured he's going to have like all black. All black hair is dark hair. Let me start coloring him in. All right, I think we're looking pretty good here. Now we're all shaped. So now. I think what I'll go ahead and do is I'll start shade shade this guy in. So then one thing I'll definitely start is that he's just shading in like the brim of his hat. Yeah, just have this whole brim of his hat just completely in shadow. You know, I think I decided, you know, for the light switch, I'm gonna have it coming from coming from this angle. So all the shadows are gonna be on this side of him. So you know, do some little so I'm gonna start putting shadows on his head on this side of him. And I'm basically gonna be going kind of a cross hatch pattern. And see, this is why I like using ballpoint pen. You can really kind of get some really nice, fine gradients and some nice more like delicate shading. But even as I'm shading, I'm kind of going as the shape of this shape of his head. And not going I'm going with the shape of it and no, not against it. You know, remember like even though the card of it still has weight and form to it. So see like right here, you know, for his chin, so these guys are pretty round. I want my mark I marks to kind of go with the shape of that chin. 
you know, and vice versa, you know, for the rest of you for the rest, you know, of his body. Make sure I have a big shadow down here, you know, for his chin, because usually you're use your wide chin neck is gonna cause like a pretty like deep shadow. Still add some shadows up here, you know, since his head's slightly shaded from the brim of his hat. There we go. Now I'll start shading you on the side of his arm. At least this arm that's, that's kind of partially hidden from us. Let me pull it away so you can see a little bit better. All right, there we go. Let's start shading the side of his shirt right here. Yeah, and I'm basically using kind of a cross hatching pattern. Uh, called the unknown soldier there we go yeah you can see even as i'm going across i'm still going into shaping you know shape his body so since it's got kind of like this little round curvature shape i still want to go along that rhythm along that line And, and, and in doing that, you know, he starts coming to life in a way, too. Start coloring to shave his arms a little bit, too. I think I probably will do as I'm working on this. I'll Probably go back over with the um, black marker and start doing some more deeper shading. So don't worry, that's going to be coming pretty soon. Start shading around the saxophone. There we go. Get to shading on the edge here. Also, can't forget, you know, shading around the bottom edge right here. And here to look at you know, this one big cylinder at the bottom. So it's going to start at one inch, it's going to really kind of curve like around the corner. There we go. And we'll have a little shout around the little keys here, all the keys this guy has to play. So I'll make sure I'll start shading in around his knees. Well, his legs, really. <laughs> Making sure I get those nice and pronounced. And see, you know, as I'm shading in, you know, he starts coming alive. You know, his form is more defined. Seems a lot more three dimensional. He's not two dimensional like we had before. You know, he's slowly coming alive, you know, with his extra shading. So I'm just gonna start keep adding more till I feel like we have what we need. And even if I'm using red right now, I'll probably go back in with the black just to really make it pop even more because sometimes that extra contrast can really make a huge difference, believe it or not. Start shading around his little loafers. Let me color the inside of his inside of his slacks too. That's where I, I keep calling him slacks. I keep calling him loafers. I, I should stick to one. Let's call them slacks. Slack sounds a little classier. classier. This is a classy guy. All right, there we go. Also, gotta draw a shadow. 
So I have to kind of go off towards the right side. So I'm using lead crush. I'm starving in. So I start, the shadows will be darker, like when it's close to him. But as we start going further out, you know, it gets lighter and lighter. Yellow is shading him for, for his glass jar. Even though it's clear, it's still going to have some shading to it as well. Yeah, everything's going to cast light or reflect light in some way. So I give a smaller shadow for the little tip jar. All right, I think we're looking pretty good, pretty good here now. So I've used our red one. Now I've used our black. So now we're going to we're going to start alternating them, alternating with the shading. So I want to do get some deeper shade, deeper shading on him. So right now I think I'll definitely start you know with the brim of his hat. So right now I'm going to start very lightly. Just really light, you know, subtle, subtle shades here and here there. Because even though I do want to have some shade underneath the brim of his hat, since it's in shadow, it may not want as deep up here as I thought. I was going to do the same for the brim of his hat. Now, let's start doing the same for his face, just more cross hatting. But at this point, you know, now since I got all, everything in place, now since I got his form in place, so I got the overall shape of his figure, like I'm making really tiny adjustments to the shading and really tiny uh, detail adjustments. Because since just about everything placed now, I don't need to add too much. At least I don't think I have to at this point. There we go. Add some little shade around his ears. Make sure I get that deep shadow in, underneath his chin. There we go. You really kind of get that nice deep shadow here. There we go. Also get the shadows underneath his collar. Shade around his little arms, more around his chest here. I'm just kind of starting, kind of just along, just kind of going along these curves. And just cross hatching, and just actually drawing against like those curves. So I some shade on his tie. I'm gonna bring it down, but I forgot it cuts. Forgot it cuts off, so let me make sure I have the end of his tie come out down here. Yeah, because I figured he's probably wearing a pretty big tie. Because you got some ties pretty big, yet some ties that are pretty small. In fact, letting Wabalu and do will actually kind of start coloring this in where it's like a dark color. Let me start coloring that in some more. There we go. Let me start doing some light shading around his hands, around his little fingers. Yeah, the one thing I should do a lot, should do more, I should really start a lot more practice in drawing in, especially getting different poses, because, you know, the more you do, the more you get, you get comfortable in drawing hands different poses, you know, you know, the better they are.
at least a better day will turn out to be. Just more and more shading around his gut. There we go. Just really kind of start bringing out more of that extra shading. We gotta make sure we get, get his arms too. Can't forget the shading on his arms. There we go. Also, I didn't realize I, I barely had any shading on, on his forearms up here. So let me go ahead and get that. Let's add a little on here. Go. Yeah. So I'm just making these pretty like small like, little adjust little adjustments in shading. But even as I'm adding the shading, I'm just getting progressively dark part depending on how much how much contrast I want. Like say for example, like since we're further away from the line this, so I'm gonna have the this side be more deeper shade than on this side. Just start acting our extra shadows here. Some around his nose. There we go. Make sure his hairline is, hair is more pronounced here. We darken his hair around, around here. There we go. We start shading in his sacks. There we go. By the way, I hope everyone's having a pretty good um, evening so far. Now, mine hasn't been too uneventful. They just had to run a couple of errands. One guy hair haircut, and you know, I was long overdue for forgetting that. I have to go in for my own day job, you know, tomorrow morning. But you know, I go in at seven, so don't worry too much about you know having having to stay too late. Yeah, so I'm just kind of going the shape of this sack sack shape here. Yeah, now as I'm cross side, I'm slowly getting darker and darker as I get further away from our light source. There we go. Here, Pat, like kind of these like nice like little crescent shaped shadows are pretty keys. I think what I'll do, I'll probably kind of, for shade, I'll kind of leave it as is, guys. Yeah, I could add some extra little details on the side to make it a little more shiny, because you have some seconds when they're brand new, they're shiny. They have some that are a little warm, a little worn, it's going to kind of lose that sheen. But even when you're on sac actual sacks instruments, when they, even if they lose their sheen, they're still playable. Make sure I get some shade on his legs. I tell you, probably one of the very first um, jazz shows I ever went to go see is actually at a local like, jazz show here in my hometown. And I saw a group on um, Spyro Gyra. And um, Spyro Gyra, you know, they're, they're kind of like a jazz pop, like kind of jazz rock type of band. But their lead, um, their lead, like band leader, was their saxophone, you know, Jay Beckenstein. 
And, you know, unfortunately, you know, at least when I went to go see, you know, it was raining most of the time. It was a lot of traffic. I was only able to see them for at least maybe about only like a couple of couple of a set minutes. Really, it was only a couple of seconds because we got there like right when we were ready to go off stage. But I was able to it was get on a new like album at the time. I was get a CD and I actually got, you know, the leader, you know, Jay Beckett signed, you know, you know, to autograph it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Let me get another pen. Sorry about that. You only have to get in our pen for a moment. But yeah, it turned to be a really good show. Yeah, I've been to quite a number of like really good jazz, really good jazz shows. Because aside from seeing J. Vicks on Spiral Jar, I've seen um Pharaoh Sanders, you know, rest in peace. I saw him and he was a headline, headliner at our same jazz festival. And that was really cool, you know, being able to see him. And you know, also, you know, there have been other plays I've seen like around town because because we would also have some like streamers out play, you know, or our public transit systems. Like sometimes we'll be playing like, you know, at the bus stops. Sometimes we'll have them playing, you know, in the train stations. And they'll usually be really, really good. And they'll draw a pretty good crowd. Yeah, so make a shot for shoes here. Let me start in the shading for his tipping jar. There we go. All right. So we've got our, all right, so we've got our buster here. I think what I'll go ahead and do now, now that I know he's looking pretty, looking pretty good, I think I'll start outline, start doing outline, just really kind of start fine tuning. And so what I'm gonna use, gonna use a Stadler pen for some of these thick outlines. These thick outlines for these really dark shapes. Let me start coloring this in. And I'll just start going to overall general out, draw this outline again. Because usually if I tend to out, outline my kids, I'll just try to pretend to go pretty thick, just for a little silhouette, you know, main shape of, their, of the figure. And then I'll go back, you know, for the details, you know, maybe with just smaller pens, which one I will break out in just a moment. Go. Yeah, just have all these long flowing lines. There we go. And that'll really. I feel it'd be really kind of nice to kind of make them pop just a little bit more. You know, I think I'll add some extra sh extra shadow for his glasses, make them a little bit darker. And then record on the shape of a sax. There we go. There we go. Yeah, of course, I have to draw on Alan for his tip jar, too. I think what I'll do, let me kind of darken the shadows on both, on both elements here, both the tip jar and the person that's being tipped. 
I think while I'm at, I think I'll actually kind of outline his beliefs on it a little bit more. He believes on his sex. So that way it'll, it'll still stand out. I think I'll get a smaller pen now. Usually, if I'm usually working pen, I tend to like to work with different types of pens. Some smaller ones, some some big ones. I think what I'll do for some smaller G's, I'll use like a smaller pen. I'm going to use this one right here. This is not as thick as this one, but it really does come in handy if I want. If I want to kind of make some bold lines, but they aren't too big. So I'm just kind of start going on the main shape. Shape his body so just around the shape of his, you know, his torso, around the shape of his arms, you know, his hands. There we go. They draw around Ed the hook end here. There you go. I think we're looking pretty good too. I think. I think I'll go do it now, just inside because I'm looking pretty good. I think I'll add some extra shame and go back in with the red. Do have some nice little details here and there. Yeah, pretty much what I'm doing now is a lot more kind of like a little micromanaging. Since the big stuff is out of the way, now I'm just making like really nice little tiny adjustments. Really tight just to really kind of make the picture come alive a little bit more. So I'm just gonna kind of really kind of darken the shading around his legs a bit more. Since guts kind of hanging over here, I'm gonna add a little shadow down here. There we go. Add some more shading around his shoes. Make sure the shading there is more pronounced. I emphasize the shade here more on his shirt. Not only emphasize, you know, the overall shape, you know, with the shape of his arms, but also emphasize the folds too. So I kind of add a little shading around these folds. And pretty much for the most part, I'm just going to a cross hatching pattern. And there's different ways you can do it too. You can do cross hatching, you can do like a stippling thing type of deal. You can do a combination of both. Yeah, there's many ways you can actually, you know, shade no with pen. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. It's an honor for me to be able to. Can I get around his little collar up here? Get his shirt here. There 
There we go. Kind of dark, darkens in the shadows here. Kind of smooth that out. There we go. We may not have time to really do to do two drawing tonight. So I actually have some other things I have to take care of later on this evening. So probably won't be around a little bit much longer. So I figure what I'll do, I'll continue fine tuning this. And I hope you like if you're all those that tune in to watch this. I hope you enjoyed you enjoyed like, spending time with me. Do I certainly enjoy spending time with you? Some more shading at the top. Start shading his hands a little bit more. Add nice, some more shade right here. Any kind of situation is cheap. More shading around the sacks. Okay. If you ever want to get in doing a lot of rough doing and sketching yourself, you don't necessarily have to use like ball pointers like I'm doing. You can do just, you know, just one pen. You can use pencils, you can even use markers. Just use, you know, whatever medium that feels the most comfortable for you. Yeah, because art, art, especially making art, to be a fun experience. I want you to be able to enjoy, you know, what you're doing. There we go. I'll be shading more here on the shadows. There we go. All right. Okay, I think we're almost done here. I think one thing we can do next is probably add a little extra color to it. And what I think I will do, the action extra color, probably use some colored pencils. So I think I got a few on here. I think I got these um, Faber Castell, these gold Faber um, pencils. I'm going to use some of those to actually color that in. So I think I'll start with the sax right here. And since I've already done a lot of the heavy lifting work, you know, with the shading with the pens, I'm not going to really work too much, too much shading with the extra colored pencils here. But even that, but even the same way, I'm gonna go fairly light as I'm coloring everything in. Still leave a little white near the near the edge, especially on the left side to have a little indication of a highlight. Because even though it's a, I figure for a shack, we're gonna have a little bit of shine to it. As I'm going further away, I'm adding more pressure, adding more color. You know, let me get a different color. It's kind of a like golden orange. I want to have a yellowish color, so let me get a yellow out. Let's see how that looks. Oh, yeah, that looks much better. I like that. Thank you. 
There we go. You know, now for this guy's skin color, I think I'll use a kind of, just kind of a nice, like, good light brown tan color. Use that to start coloring everything in. As I'm going further away from this, I'm adding more pressure. And even as I'm shading, I'm still going in the direction of the um, shadows I've already established, you know, with my own ballpoint pens. Make sure I get a color around his neck. There we go. Also got color in his hands. There we go. A little bit brown here for some dark, some darker shadows. There's sex. Just some nice darker ones. And you know what? I think I still want to get some slightly darker shadows here. You know what? Let me go in with a darker shade of brown. See how that looks. Oh yeah, there we go. That that's a much better difference. There we go. And even when I'm shading with color pens, it always helps you know start light, start light at the beginning, and then slowly build your way up as you keep going forward. I don't know what color I want to do for. Do for a shirt just yet. I do know I'm gonna have this pants, you know, be maybe probably gonna be jeans, so gonna make it be a cool blue. So I'm gonna go with a little light, just a very really light layer to start everything off with. And I'm not too concerned about having white highlights here, you know, since, since, you know, pants are made of wool, they're not reflective, like, say, the metal, like, in front of saxophone. So you want to give an indication that it's definitely, like, a softer, a softer surface. So I'm just going on the shape, just kind of... Starting light and slowly but steadily getting heavier with more color. Even add some shots, small like cash shells from the top. Look pretty good. You know, I think what I will do, since most of it's pretty red, I think maybe I'll use this, I'll do green for sure. On that red fairly well. So just like the other, I'm starting off fairly light, very light layer so far. Just light enough so it's easy to layer like, on top of it. And you can see, you know, our bus can sack some play. He's really come alive just in the past hour. 
you know, beginning, he was just, you know, it's an ordinary sketch, just an ordinary loose sketch and pen, but, you know, like, over the course of this hour, you know, we've really started fleshing him out. So what I've been doing is I'm going to start adding some more shadows to him. Yeah, just really can start kind of going deeper with the layers, going to be more heavy, just adding more extra pressure, you know, as I'm coloring this guy in. Yeah, and it always helps, too, you know, as you're coloring, the, coloring something in, you know, start light. But as you start doing the shading, start going heavier in. And I'm not pressing too hard because I've already established a lot of my shame for our ballpoint pens we've done earlier. So there's no need to do too much work because I've already done a lot of the work beforehand. It's gonna go, they go pretty well because they're technically on the color with a complementary color. So seems like a pretty good choice. Like a nice choice for two things to like work together. Gonna make sure I get around his gut a little bit here. Yeah, it's going to can get progressively heavier as I'm calling more of this guy in. Gotta make sure I go over on this side, because especially this side, this area is more in shadow than on this side. Yeah, hopefully if you ever go to another like festival that's in your hometown, like you might hear some music playing. By all means, definitely check it out. You might find you know, some busking musicians just like this guy that actually playing their music. And just sit there and listen to them. Because, like, I'll tell you, I've heard some music, like busking music that makes you some really just wonderful music. And in some cases, it's not even just, you know, just sing musicians. Like, it could be from bands. It could be just bands, that, bands of, of guys that get together and they'll just play music. Yeah, they don't necessarily need like a big, you know, like blitzy venue. All they need is some instruments, a good corner that's popular with a lot of people, you know, they end up to start playing. Let me make sure I color in his head. Especially down here, I'm gonna go heavier on the brim and shadow. Can you know, since this part's in shadow, make sure I go. This is a little heavier. Make sure that's a lot more obvious. So let me go and start coloring that in. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, see how he's coming alive. Cause so I tell you, he did not look like this like an hour ago. Sorry, add more shadow to shadow to his hat. Let me see. Did I miss anything? Oh, I forgot the yellow on his arm right here. Get more on the edge here. Get more on the edge here. Here. And we and our busking guy, you know what? He's cool and stapper. You know, he's ready to play. And a part of me is wondering, I feel like maybe there's one extra color I could add to really make him pop a little bit more. So I'll tell you what I'll do, you know, for the background. Let me get kind of this nice like, little magenta color here. And I'll just start low, kind of lightly going around him. Still gonna have like a little white border to kind of, kind of really make him pop against it a little bit more, but they'll really kind of make this Make him pop more than he does already. Here we go. And I'm just kind of doing like pretty light, pretty light strokes here. And I'm not planning on doing a too complicated background here because this right here is just a very simple background. Just some ground is made of nothing but color. There we go. I'm just going all around this body. And you know what? Same like how I'm gonna deal with the um, ballpoint pens. I'm also gonna do this little cross hatching effect. 
start sketching check in one direction i'm also going to go in the other Make sure I go around here. Please add a little more to the top here. Yeah, to see it really kind of dark, darken some of our purple here. I think I'll do it more here, at least since this side side is in shadow. All right, I think we're looking pretty pretty good here. This is our bu this is our busker, you know, playing the baritone sax. Well, I gotta look at kind of more of a tenor sax like that now, but this guy is done. I'm done for done for a night. I won't have, to have time to do a second one like I thought I was going to. I might be able to do one, do a second one tomorrow if I have time. But thank you for so much that everyone has decided to tune in for tonight. And I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful night.